What's up guys this is Shukesh Panik once again and today I'll be doing a gaming review on this all new Motorola Moto X Play. But before I show you the games I'll be talking about the display quality, the handling ergonomics of the phone and also the battery performance, the overheating issue I'm facing and the loudspeaker quality, the RAM, storage, CPU, GPU, the benchmark scores etc. So that you can get a clear idea about the real performance of this Motorola device. Now when I first came to know about this phone I was quite surprised to see such specs at this price point but after using this for like 3 days I am slightly disappointed. Well I'll discuss all the issues I'm facing on this device in this review so be with me guys. Now let's first talk about the gaming ergonomics and this Moto X Play is a bulky thick phone. But the good thing is the back is rubberized which provides a great grip and big phones are quite easy to drop so this might help. The back is totally curved and at the edges the thickness of the phone is 8.9mm which is not bad. This curvature also adds to the proper handling of the phone and though this device sports a huge 5.5 inch screen the handling the one handed uses of the phone is actually quite impressive. I can reach each and every part of the display and the screen to body ratio is as high as 74% which is as per the flagship devices. So one handed gaming isn't an issue and the navigation keys are on screen so while gaming in landscape mode there is a very little chance you will accidentally press them because they hides once the game starts. The loudspeaker is at the front which provides better experience and you are never going to cover it with your thumb. I'll talk about the quality of the speaker later on in this review while gaming. Overall the ergonomics, the design of the phone feels perfect for gaming and the display is the main attractive point because it's not just a huge 5.5 inch screen, it's a full HD display with 403 ppi. So far I know this is not an IPS panel so the brightness isn't that high but the saturation and the contrast levels are really impressive and the color rendering is I think somewhat better than the IPS panel on the Moto G 3rd generation. Now it's the time to talk about the benchmarks. On this Geekbench 3 I got 686 in single core and 2585 in multi core. I have also done the battery test and the score is 475. So the CPU score is actually quite decent for a device in this price category and I'll talk about the battery in a minute. The CPU is basically a combination of two quad-core Cortex-A53 processors. One is clocked at 1.65 GHz and another one is at 1.11 GHz. The GPU is Adreno 405. So for the price of only 18,499 rupees, you are getting such powerful CPU and GPU. The n 5 score is also appreciable. It's 37,444, enough for playing almost all the games on the Play Store. Now it's the time to talk about one of the main issues of the phone. I've run the Antutu stability test and you'll be quite disappointed to see the battery temperature soaring above 40 degree and during gaming it's actually much higher. So the battery backup is not as good as I expected. As you know this device sports a gigantic 3600 and 30mAh battery but I think you won't be getting more than 1.5 days on normal to heavy uses. In gaming the battery might run out of juice within 4 or 5 hours. It's still quite good, better than almost all the other players in its class. The CPU seems ok. Now let's talk about the storage and RAM. The phone sports 2GB of RAM and out of that I get almost 1.2GB free all the time even after installing lots of games. The main reason is this phone is running on stock Android and there is no custom interface to eat up the RAM. So that's another positive point regarding gaming. This is the list of sensors. Almost all the sensors required for gaming are present. Before I start the gaming let me just give you a quick glimpse of the Nina Mark 2 and the 3D Mark Gamers benchmark scores. You got 59.4 FPS which is perfect or almost perfect. There you get the 3D Mark score quite decent for a device in this category. The pure Android interface on the Moto X Play is more or less quite swift and the internal space on this phone is though 16 gig there is a 32 gig model with 20,000 rupees price tag but I think this 16 gig model is just okay because you can move your installed applications to the external SD card which is expandable up to 128 gig and for the extra 1500 rupees you can get a 64 gig card. Well guys it's the time to start the gaming and these are the games I'm going to show you today. Most of these games are very graphics intensive and the first game I have for you today is the Asphalt 8 Airborne. 
To check the actual performance of this Moto X Play, I have set the graphics quality to the highest level possible. Now let's check how does this device handle the most popular racing game on the Play Store. Well, the graphics is looking quite smooth on this very high resolution display and the loudspeaker quality also seems great. The maximum volume is not groundbreaking but it's quite clear and enough for indoor gaming or movie watching. Asphalt 8 is running smooth so far but I've played this level before on this Moto X Play and there is occasional lag or shutter I've experienced. If you have played this game before on a high-end device then you will definitely feel the difference. In fact, the Samsung Galaxy J7 handles this game better. Well, it's not that bad and you might not even notice these slight inferior graphics. Well, I'll play this game for a while, you can skip this game and move to the next one following the timeline in the description below. Let me also show you another level, you can get a better idea about the black levels and the graphics details. The next game I'm gonna show you is the Nova 3 and I want to mention here the Motorola Moto G 3rd generation could not handle this game. Let's see what happens on this Moto X Play. As you know the Nova 3 is a very graphics intensive game and the graphics is looking quite crisp and detailed. Well there is definitely frame drop. The game is visibly lagging. So this is totally disappointing. Well at this moment the game's performance improved but again it's lagging. The scenario is slightly better than the Moto J3 but on the lower priced Galaxy J7 the game was just buttery smooth. On the J7 you usually get around 500 or 600 MB of free RAM. Moto X Play offers at least 1.1 GB of free RAM all the time. The CPU and GPU are also comparable but the gaming is just unacceptable. So better avoid this phone if you are a gaming lover. After playing this game for a while the lag has been minimized. Well it's lagging again. Still the game is playable. On the Moto G3, the game was lagging from start to end. The lag is almost gone now. But still this is quite disappointing to see lag on a device in this price bracket having such nice specifications. Guys the next game I have for you is called Injustice and this is not a very graphics intensive game. I just wanted to show you the mid level games can be easily played on this phone. It's a nice game you should try and the controls, the graphics, everything is looking just fine. 
no issues at all. As you know, I have another channel called Gadgets Portal Play where I show Android games and applications. So check that channel out as well. I already reviewed this game. I'll play this game for a minute and then I'll move to the next one. Check the description below for the timeline. Well, next let's try the Modern Combat 5. As you can see guys this game is running without any issues so far. The controls, graphics, the touch response everything is working as expected. Playing this type of games on a huge display like this is actually quite enjoyable. With the Android 6.0 update the lagging issues might get fixed. So let's hope for the best. Apparently this Moto X Play is a perfect gaming machine. If you are a hardcore gamer then you should actually avoid this phone for now. Go for Galaxy J7 instead. Now I'll play this game for a while you can enjoy. Guys, I've been playing games for not more than 20 minutes now and the back part is super hot. Let me show you the battery temperature at this moment. It's 42.8 degrees Celsius and this is just the battery temperature. The processor is much hotter. The back panel is made of plastic and rubber, which is somewhat sinking the heat. If you remove it, you can actually feel the temperature. The top part of the phone is so hot, if I receive a call at this moment, I cannot put the phone into my ear. The display part is even worse, so beware of this heating issue. I have few more games downloaded and I want to briefly show them as well. This game is called Brothers in Arms 3. This game is also quite graphics intensive, but fortunately there is no lag. There is nothing to talk about, this game is running battery smooth on this device. Enjoy this game and you can always keep following the timeline in the description below.
Well, I'm totally in a weird position. Let's fight hand to hand. Well guys, we are at the end of this gaming review and let's conclude this video while playing the Subway Surfer. The overall gaming performance of this Moto X Play is not as good as I expected. There is occasional lags and hiccups. The overheating issue is totally disturbing. I was quite optimistic about this phone at least on the gaming but totally disappointed. I really hope Motorola will fix these issues with OTA updates. Well, as you have noticed, there is lag on this subway surfer as well. So there is definitely something wrong with this Moto X Play. The full review on this phone is on the way and I'll give my final verdict in that video. So make sure you are subscribed and meanwhile you can check the reviews on the Galaxy J7. A simple game like this is lagging on this phone so shame on Motorola. Well, that's all in this review guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep in touch and check the description below for more interesting videos on this device and other phones in the same category.